Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Batata TCG. I'm bringing you today one of my favorite decks. It's actually my favorite decks. It's an aggro Sylvian High Horn Beast. I call him the Sylvian High Beast. I love him. He's extremely aggressive. He gets a lot of attacks early on in the game and gets a lot of damage out on the enemy. He has to manage his resources though and can serve his hand. But if he's able to do that, he's going to get a lot of push potential and destroy the enemy with that the amount of attacks uh, that the enemy has to guard for. So let's go ahead and jump into the deck profile guys and I'll show you some combos I love. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to do a lot of overdress content with some D Digimon TCG. Those are my favorite these TCG games and I'm invested in them. So let's go ahead and jump into this video and we'll talk about anything else later. All right, as you can see, here's the deck profile. I have put all the triggers here for you guys to see immediately. Obviously, we're going to play eight crits. This is because Sylvian High Beast has a lot of aggro potential. It's able to attack a lot and the crits are only going to help it. You could run four fronts. I think that would be very useful as well because you're always going to be attacking uh, with every single unit, even your back row. So that could give you a lot of push potential. I just like the ability to crit my opponents immediately and put them under pressure, especially since usually I'm going to be attacking with my grade three first. So that's why. And then you also have this amazing Stoikea trigger, over trigger. He's one of the best over triggers in the game right now. He does just so much. He heals one of your damage. He gives you your whole front row 10,000. He gives you an additional crit and you draw a card. I mean, it's insane. I mean, no, no other card, no other over trigger is just as good as this. And that's another reason why I love playing Stoikea. You could remove these three draws for the front, uh, but the, actually the, the actual deck really lacks draw power. Besides Alina, able to bring you cards back from the dead, and uh, maybe some of the Lucky Cyrus right here plays, you really can't get a lot of your units out uh, for cheap, and you can't conserve your hand. So that's what the draw triggers are for, just to try to conserve some of your hand. But the basic idea of the deck is you want to rush as soon as possible. So Alina wants to come out ASAP. You want to use Sylvian, the actual Lattice Beast ability every single time you can. And then you also want to try to get Alina out as soon as possible. She's going to give you a lot of pressure. Um, the idea is she, when she's played, you can counter bless one, soul bless one, get any card from your drop zone that's great two or less back to the field. This is very easy to do because you're already discarding cards uh, in your hand just to be able to ride. So it's actually very easy to get Alina out and get some really good troops out on the field. Usually your uh, best bets with Alina are to either get another Sylvian High Beast or one of those Praying Mantises right here. Your orders are only there to help you. Um, also, you, this is another way you can get some of your units out, but uh, you're soul blasting a lot in this deck, so it's going to be very hard for you to be able to use a lot of these returning units. So you have to really conserve your energy and conserve your resources, and you have to actually you know, use them the right time. There is arguments to play more of these, maybe four. I like them at three right now. They're useful, they do a lot of work. And bringing back one of your praying mantises so you can either guard with it or play it again next turn is just such a strong ability. And obviously this Sylvian High Beast right here, Mr. Gnosia, Gnosia, he is your number one play. He is the one that you want to always give your counter blast ability attack from the back row too and usually he wants to sit behind the grade three and we'll go ahead and see some of these combos that we can do here in a bit but his ability is pretty insane from the back row when this unit attacks just counter blast one and you have a lot of counter blasts actually because you don't counter blast that much you actually soul blast much more counter blast one Choose one of your your rear guard, your other rear guards, and it gets the same power this unit gets. So if you give this unit any kind of power from the crit triggers or draw triggers or anything, when you counter blast, that unit gets the same amount of power 
the total power that this Sylvian beast has. So this is insanely strong and it attacks from the back row. Uh, it's just, uh, this is the whole deck right here. This card creates the whole deck and makes it super aggressive. Obviously your grade three, you don't need any other grade threes besides this guy. He is your bread and butter. This is all you need, his ability. Um, <clears throat> if you do Persona Ride, then this ability just wins games. If you don't Persona Ride you, <laughs> and you hit a critical, you probably win game. Uh, if you do not Persona Ride, you don't hit a critical, you still keep your opponent at really a lot of damage or make him guard huge amounts of cards. So it's an amazing card to push with. And uh, I mean, the deck is so aggressive and they complement each other so well. Let's go ahead and see some combos that we can use and uh, just to make this deck perfect. All right, guys, so here's the first combo for this deck. You went first, you went ahead and ridden on Cheris, and now you're gonna go ahead and draw a card. Uh, well, actually, you're getting attacked, so you're gonna go ahead and get damaged. Uh, this is your damage trigger. Hopefully, he only uh, rode on an, a grade one and attacked you. So now you're gonna go ahead and draw a card because he's gonna end his turn. And then you're going to play, uh, you're gonna go ahead and discard this guy to get Sylvian High Beast out here, Mr. Lattice. And his ability is going to activate. I'm talking about Cheris's ability here. When this unit is rodent upon by a Hornbeat la Lattice, you may reveal the top card of your deck if it's a grade two or less. Call it to rear guard. If it's not, you have to put it into your soul, which is amazing. If it's, we're actually hoping for it to not be a grade two, or less. We want it to be a not a unit. We want it to be a trigger because we want to be able to activate uh, Cyrus's ability here as well. But if not, uh, it's still awesome to get it. So let's go ahead and see it. It is a grade one. We'll go ahead and place it here because the ability actually says call it to rear guard so we're gonna go ahead and place this pg one here and that's actually why i play that th my fourth pg is just a regular pg that doesn't have the discard the ability to discard uh, to not discard because sometimes you just call your pgs out and so to me it's not necessarily uh important to have all those pgs that discard their units you could uh i'm trying to get this lights off you could maybe uh, have the non-discarding cards because you might have to call them out anyways. So that's a successful call. That's not too bad. Uh, we do have two soul, but uh, we'll see. Here is the next ability we're going to go ahead. This is the problem. Now we can't use Cyrus' ability because we're going to have to use Alina's ability, which is going to go ahead and counter blast one, soul blast one, and the reason we're using Alina because it's more secure than Cyrus's ability. Cyrus, we're not sure. We might actually so blast two, and end end up getting a useless card. Whereas now we're actually going to go ahead and able to get a grade one on the field, which is a good Cyrus, and give plus five k here, moving up, up, and that way we get three attacks in the first turn. We're able to attack and try to push the opponent. So that's a cool combo you can achieve very easily with the help of Alina. And if we're able to, if Chalice, Charis is actually funny enough and he wants to hit with his RNG, you're still able to, with Cyrus's ability, activate him again. And because he's gonna let you put that grade zero into the soul, then you're gonna be able to activate Cyrus again when you place this guy down, you're going to be able to Soul Blast 2 and reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call it to rear guard. If it's not, put it into your hand. So if it's a grade 3, put it into your field a lower. If it's a grade 0, put it into your hand. So it's a great ability to activate. That's why we love them. That's the first combo, guys. Alright, so for the next combo to activate, we have to actually have two Counter Blasts. So we're hoping for, we're actually going to have to attack, get attacked twice during the opponent's turn and not worry about it. Uh, we, you might not want to hit four damage, that's okay, but you do want that three damage so you can activate both Magnolia and the Sylvian High Beast, Gnosia's power. So if you heal, that's great. If not, you still have to take that two damage for this to activate. 
So if you if they actually block you, you're not going to be able to activate both those abilities together. But if they do, then that's great. You're going to be able to push really fast. Anyway, so this is what you do. You're going to go ahead and draw for your turn and discard the card. So you can go ahead and uh, uh, ride into your Magnolia. Before Magnolia activates its, its ability, you're going to be able to activate your Lattice by Soul Blasting one card. To look and look at the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call to the back row. If it's not, put it into your hand. So we're going to go ahead and put this order in our hand. Now we have some good defensive power for next turn. So now we're going to go ahead and use his ability right here. We're going to go ahead and call him down. We're not going to use his ability yet until he attacks, obviously. But we need him on the field. Unfortunately, we don't really have anything else to play. But we know we're going to be playing this next turn. So it's okay to play Praying Mantis down behind this grade 1. Because we're actually going to be able to get this grade 1 with my Ghost Chase next turn. And I'm going to go ahead and give the plus 5 from my Mantis to this girl right here. So we can achieve the 23 combo. Anyways, Magnolia is going to go ahead and attack. Kind of last one. He's gonna give this guy the ability to attack next turn after the attack goes through. So plus first, second. Oof, we did hit a critical trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and give all the effects here. So he's a 33k. If the opponent guard, if not, we're obviously gonna get the crit here. And then I wanna give the power actually here because he's gonna give the power to anybody who wants. So we're always gonna put, give the power here. So Gnosia is going to actually get the plus 10k. Next, I'm going to attack with Gnosia. His ability activates by counter blasting one. I give one unit his power, and I believe... Yeah, just his power. It's not his count critical. So just his power, and he's going to be 20k by himself. And actually, because of Magnolia's ability, he gets plus 5k. So he's 25k by himself, and we're able to give that to this row, which is at 12k if we want or we can give it to this row which is at a perfect 23 to make it uh 48k row which is insane um so yeah that's an amazing combo it's very easy to do you do need that two counter blast from there you're gonna start guarding with ghost chase to get your pg back and that's a great combo right there and then you can play the next Ghost Chase again. So you can get either your Alina or your Praying Mantis back. If you get your Alina, that would be nice. There's nothing though to get, so I would I would get my Praying Mantis back. And then, uh, of course, you're going to need to kind of take a damage. Oof, nice, we get a heal. And usually the opponent's probably going to be on more damage than you, so the heal might not activate. But if it does, that's great for you. And obviously, you have to be very specific with which card you want to be putting down because you might be able to get them back with Elena. So those are the combos I love to start the game with and I hope this kind of helps you understand how the deck works and how you you know kind of utilizing all these cards with Gino 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 his little baby's name I don't know what his name is. Of course if he's not in the back row you can always put him here and his ability will still activate. Um, Oh, actually, it only activates in the back row, so you have to be... So he's literally a combo with Magnolia, so we can't wait to see some support. Maybe if they can help us uh, gain some resource management by adding some soul or being able to counter charge, that would make Magnolia extremely strong. As of now, it's very hard to use your combos effectively uh, more than once uh, So because of the resource management problems. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.